Hey guys, it's Ryder here, and if you're a fan of DC or Arrow the Flash, then you'll know that the trailer for the new spin-off show, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, came out uh, last Thursday. So, you know, that was really huge because, one, this spin-off show was highly speculated from fans of Flash and Arrow, you know, to just casual comic book viewers, or to comic book TV show or movie viewers, who just, you know, heard about this interesting concept. And it was really highly speculated what it would be called, what characters would be in it, you know, how it would tie in, the villain, and all that great stuff. So, yeah, the trailer came out, and it was amazing. It, it was beyond amazing. I absolutely love that trailer. I've watched it almost a hundred times, probably, and I just love, I love the trailer. One thing they did extremely well in the trailer was stressing the plot, which you can see that if you, you know, see a lot of movie trailers, which most people do, if you watch TV or anything, because they're, they're always on every channel, they, some of them don't really stress the main plot very well. Like, I don't know, you just, you, they never really give a, a really thorough walkthrough of, this is the team, this is what's going to happen, it's going to happen because of this, and this will be the villain, the problem, the conflict. DC's Legends of Tomorrow trailer did that really well. And obviously the villain's going to be Vandal Savage. So that was extremely exciting. You know, I love Vandal Savage. Um, but, you know, Vandal Savage is a kind of, he's a time-traveling menace. And, you know, very big. He's lived throughout many different time eras and periods. And... That's what makes him such a big threat. So then we have the concept of time travel being introduced on The Flash currently. Uh, actually, the finale for The Flash is tomorrow night where Barry goes back in time. So there's a massive, you know, time traveling stuff right there. You know, Harrison Wells, or I guess I should say Eobard Thawne, he's from the future. We've got that. All, you know, that's all coming together. Barry changed the past with the whole weather wizard and... You know, that, that story there, and with Cisco and, you know, Eobard Dawn. So, yeah, that was that. But now in Legends of Tomorrow, the concept of time travel is obviously being carried over. Of course, we just said that, you know, Vandal Savage is a time-traveling menace. So, because everything's out of order or, you know, and they need a team to stop this threat, which is Vandal Savage... We have Rip Hunter. And today, we're going to be talking about the future of Rip Hunter, Booster Gold, and the Time Masters in the DC TV universe. So, let's sort of start with some of the basics about Rip Hunter. So, Rip Hunter in this show, he's going to be somewhat of the... You know, probably more of the, what you would say, the Captain America kind of role. And when I mean the Captain America kind of role, I don't mean that he's going to be this, you know, patri you know, patriotic kind of, you know, just figure and character, you know, who's really strong and very incorruptible and who's just very, very, you know, I, I can't even describe Captain America, but like that kind of character personality, but Captain America's role on the Avengers is somewhat of the leader, but, you know, you still kind of feel like Iron Man's leading it in a way also. I don't know if, I'm, I'm, I'm sure some people kind of know how it is, but, you know, you always, I, I kind of feel like Iron Man's the leader of the Avengers, but then also Captain America is a massive leader, leader also. And if you've seen Age of Ultron, then currently Captain America is the leader. But, you know, previously, it seems like if we're looking at the original lineup of the Avengers from the MCU, you have Iron Man sort of being the leader, and then Captain America also kind of being the leader, but still Iron Man very much being the main leader, if that makes any sense. Rip Hunter is, seems like he's going to have that kind of relationship with the Atom. Ray Palmer is supposed to be the leader of this team, but Rip Hunter knows these characters inside and out. I mean, you have to think about this. 
Rip Hunter, Rip Hunter knows the fate of all of these characters. Is the White Canary going to survive? He doesn't know. Well, I'm sorry. He does know. and But they don't know. They don't know the fate of the White Canary. Rip Hunter knows the fate. You know, is the Atom going to, you know, uh, eventually, you know, shrinks, you know, so small that he, you know, that kills himself? I don't know. They don't know. Rip Hunter knows. Um, is our characters like Superman and Batman going to lead a team known as the Justice League? They don't even know who Superman or Batman are, and they have no intentions of finding out right now, but Rip Hunter knows. Who, we don't really know if that concept's going to be introduced in Rip Hunter explaining the future, but he knows all of this because he is from the future. Uh, Son of Booster Gold, he is very wise, very smart. Um, you know, New 52, they haven't utilized him very much. In the current Convergence Booster Gold series, they are working around and with this character a lot, and that's because he has direct ties to Booster Gold. Um, you know, he's part, he's the leader or part right now. It seems like right now they're making it that he's just part of the Time Masters. Um, but for brief periods, he's been the leader and also a member. But in, in this series, he seems like he's going to end up being a, a member of the Time Masters. So that's pretty cool. The Time Masters are obviously, they're a time, uh, like sort of like a time peacekeeping kind of um, what you would either like time travelers, time throughout, you know, all of these different universe, the, the different Earths, uh, the different time periods, but they, they, you know, something's out of the time, you know, like let's say like a, a calculator was, or an iPhone was put into the 1600s, they'd be there, erase whatever happened, get that phone, take it back with them, destroy it, and make sure time is in control and, and straight. So you can see how if Harrison Wells or Barry is kind of effing something up in the se you know, season finale of The Flash, the Time Masters might be aware of that. Rip Hunter is indeed in the Flash season finale. Who knows what kind of role he's going to be in. I mean, maybe we'll see that scene from um, the trailer in the Flash like, kind of like post end part. But Rip Hunter's supposed to be in this. It would really be cool if Rip Hunter was, you know, got a signal from the future. And, the, and he sees, you know, oh shit, the Flash is going back in time to save his mom. And that's not supposed to happen. We gotta go fix this. Go send out a, a, a member. And of course, Rip Hunter maybe would go out. You know, he goes out to, to fix this. Maybe he gets trapped in that time. Maybe he sees, you know, Barry used in the show. Very, you know, done really well. Um, also, in the trailer for Legends of Tomorrow, we see that there is Harrison Wells, or Eobard Thawne Harrison Wells' head um, from the back, who look, he looks like he's about to go into the future or, or into the past. So, this kind of somewhat, you can take this a few ways. Uh, way number one, you know, Harrison Wells, or Eobard Thawne, he was part of the Time Masters. Now, he could have been a... Good guy. He could have been working with the Time Masters and, you know, gone rogue. He could have gone dark. And that's why, you know, he got, you know, he chose to take on the mantle of a reverse flash from the past. Um, or, that, that was option number one. And, you know, he could be, that's how they could sort of be incorporating that, either in flashbacks of Harrison Wells, like, going back in time. Which, that's definitely possible, you know, like... We could see sort of the backstory of why Harrison Wells wanted to come back in time, how he turned dark, if they want to go that route. If they don't, this could kind of confirm some of my theories. Not, I guess maybe not confirm them, but maybe kind of give them an extra little boost or a little kick that could, um, you know, sort of make it that this is very possible in the future to happen. And that is the Legion of Doom or the Injustice Society, or Injustice League, or the Injustice Legends of Tomorrow, or whatever. The, you know, the Anti-Legends of Tomorrow, whatever they want to call it. Just their version of the Injustice League, or the Legion of Doom. And that is, I was, my theory was, if somebody is going to come along and create the Injustice League, or the Legion of Doom, which obviously Legends of Tomorrow would be the place and the time to do that, 
then that leader is going to be Vandal Savage. We don't have a Lex Luthor. We do have Grodd, but Grodd is still developing. He is not the very smart, brainiac kind of, you know, I'm a human in a gorilla. I'm the smartest human in the world in a gorilla skin. You know, right now we're, he's developing as I'm a gorilla learning how to be smart and to fight and to talk. So it just seems very unlikely that we could or would end up seeing a character like Rod be the creator of the Injustice League or the Legion of Doom. So if Vandal Savage is the creator or the you know founding member of the Injustice League or Legion of Doom, then Harrison Wells might end up, you know, assuming he's not killed, which if he's in the trailer, it's either that, for the Legends of Tomorrow, it's either that he didn't, he did not die in the Flash season finale, or that they're using him in a flashback, which he's either going to be locked somewhere in the Flash season finale or something like that. This is the goddamn re reverse Flash. We're not going to see him die, at least not in season one. So, you know, we... At this point, we could just see him in The Legend of Tomorrow. If he didn't die, we could see him sort of trying to, you know, be in cahoots with Vandal Savage and maybe trying to recruit other members of the Injustice League. I'd love to see Cheetah. She'd be a lot of fun on there. Um, you know, I don't know. Solomon Grundy would be obviously be a lot of fun, but who really knows? Uh, Clarion, the Witch Boy... You know, that's a long shot, but uh, that could, that could they, you know, that's magic right there. Arrow Season 4 is supposed to maybe incorporate uh, magic. So, yeah, um, but, you know, there, it's just a lot of fun right there. I really I think there's a lot that can be speculated there. And then, of course, Booster Gold. Booster Gold has a very high chance of being, you know, in the show, mainly because of the fact that he is father of Rip Hunter, and he's, you know, part of this Time Masters group. He's, you know, Justice League member. Um, I don't know, you know, he's, you know, big partners with Blue Beetle. There's, you know, if J if this Jay Jackson becomes the Blue Beetle, you know, secretly Jamie Ray's, then right there there's ties to Ted Cord. Ted Cord has ties to Blue Beetle, uh, to Booster Gold. Uh, but seriously, Booster Gold, if there's one character that I think will definitely appear in here, um, that has not been confirmed yet, and that's that's Booster Gold, and that's because there's just very big chances that that will happen. Um, so let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Time Masters, how you think they're going to really play that out, what do you think about Rip Hunter, Booster Gold, Harrison Wells, Reverse Flash, and do you think we'll be seeing in, an Injustice League or anything like that? Make sure you go check out our Flash Killer Frost video, and tomorrow we should be back with a really cool, another really cool Legends of Tomorrow video explaining a little bit more in depth of some of the new superheroes that might end up appearing as well, like Blue Beetle, Jason Rush, um, yeah, a bunch of those guys. So yeah, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to click, share, like, subscribe. And yeah, I'm Ryder, signing up from Toys with Attitude, and keep riding, guys. Bye.